Hi, Dom. How hey, are you, man? Nick, what's up? Uh, not too much. Uh, ready for I'm the doing princess. good. What's that? What was that? I, I didn't hear you. Are, are, are we doing this time lag thing? Um, I'm not I, I'm not actually getting a time lag from you. I don't think but but I don't know, maybe uh, I just didn't catch what you said. But um, but no, um, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. And uh, we're doing the Princess Bride. Oh, yeah. Dom, another week, another movie. Dom's pick. Do you want to go ahead and do the. Uh, I will do the intro, though, if there are people out there that do not know The Princess Bride, I just don't know what to say. Yeah. I consider this one of the most beloved movies of all time. I, I can't think, if you don't like this movie, I have to doubt you have a soul. <laughs> but this is a 1987 Rob Reiner film. Yeah. Ba based on the book of the same name by William Goldman. Yeah, and, and I, it's I, basically, I hadn't realized it was a book, but... Oh, oh, yeah, I'm actually reading it right now. Really? Really? Yeah, I, this inspired me. Like, I had always thought, like, oh, I should check out the book. And when we decide to do the, this for the video, I'm like, okay, that's it. I need to start reading this book. Uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it is both an enchanting fairy tale... And at the same time, a comedic parody of the same fairy tale. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it really, got, it, it does. It parodies a lot of fairy tales. It's got a lot of meta in it. Yeah. Like, so uh, So when we open up the movie, it's, um, it's a grandfather. Uh, uh, I can't remember that guy's name. But I can't, can't, Peter Falk. Yeah, yeah, Peter Falk. It's a grandfather reading the fairy tale book to his grandson, Fred Savage. Yeah, Fred Savage from The Wonder Years. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and as he's reading, it goes into the story where they start talking about the, the farm boy and the princess and the pirate. And then later on, it shifts back into the grandson's room between the two of them. And so the viewer is, is pulled back and forth between this immersive fantasy environment and just a kid's room in, yeah. a, in a normal everyday house. Well, it, yeah. it, there's actually a, 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 a weird dynamic between Fred Savage and, uh, and Peter Falk, the grandfather, because um, the boy is sick. He's uh, it's just after the holidays. Just after Christmas, actually. So in, so in many ways, people, I guess, say that this is a Christmas movie. It's kind of a Christmas movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily... It, it does have... It's that time of year, or it's right after Christmas. The boy is sick. He's home. He's been playing video games. He's very... Uh, actually, it looks like on a Commodore 64. <laughs> so uh, there's probably some trivia there. But... Um, but he's um, he's intent on what he's doing, and when his mom tells him, "Oh, your grandfather's coming over to read to you, or to you, uh, to visit and read to you," um, he is not enthusiastic about it. And there's almost an estranged thing going on between him and the grandfather, where he's looking at the grandfather more like he's more of a hindrance and a bother to him. Um, and that's one of the magical things about this because that changes as the grandfather begins to read to him so yeah and and uh, I, that's another thing is the um is the um grandfather when he starts reading the book the kid is like this is a, a girl's book um because there's romance and kissing and things mm -hmm. like that and what's funny is as it progresses and he gets into the story the grandfather's like, well, you probably don't want to hear anymore. And he's like, no, no, <laughs> keep reading. So, but, but keep going with your intro. I, I interrupted so, you. So the, the, the story itself involves um, this, this woman. And I forget if she's actually a princess in the movie. I believe. Uh, because she, uh, in the book, she starts out just a standard commoner. Yeah. And it turns out for the prince to marry her, 
she has to be a princess. And so in the book, he makes her a princess of some made up region. Yeah. Well, it's, but, it's, it's weird because, um, the, um, the, you know, Carrie Elway's, uh, character, he's, um, Wesley, um, mm -hmm. he's, um, he's at, he actually works for her or works for her family. So I take it that if she's a commoner that is probably a little bit better off and they refer to her as princess buttercup. Is that the yeah, princess um, buttercup? Yeah. Which um, I remember my first viewing, I was not as enamored of this movie as you were when I first, when I first started uh, or when I first saw it and I thought there's a lot of hype around this and I'm not. So I guess you could say I have no soul or I had no soul um, because I definitely did not see uh, a lot of the charm and, and why people elevate this to a, a really, you know, high movie. Um, I don't know whether it's time and age or what it is, but I, I had a lot more appreciation for it, watching it just recently for this uh, YouTube. And I think I became a big fan of it. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, this this movie has something for everyone. It's it's complex enough. It's got enough meat on its bones that that you know, an adult, a film lover, you and I, yeah. can sit down and watch this movie. But at the same time, we can show this to a six year old. Yeah, and it still it retains an innocence, definitely a fairy tale like quality that would make it relatable and enjoyable to them as well. I think this, it spans generations. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it, it truly is. There are certain movies that I can remember seeing when I was younger. And when I say younger, I mean, even from probably my early 20s, as far as like, uh, as far as some movies, I remember The Never Ending Story. I actually showed that to you and, and your, your mm -hmm. brother when you guys were younger and, and I, I think we went to the, we did, we went to the movies for that one. Um, but the never ending story, I found like a completely charming movie, beautiful story. And, and, uh, and this has a lot of those same elements in the sense of there's, there's magic that's happening on screen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I actually really did uh, enjoy my, my reviewing of the movie. I, and, I mean, and you mentioned it before we got started here. Yeah, the cast is is near perfect. It's incredible, actually, how much talent they managed to pull together for this film. Um, I mean, uh, uh, one person before I forget to to really mention him, Peter Cook's in this as a as the bishop, and he is amazingly oh. funny as the bishop and his pronunciation, the way he speaks, it's, oh my God, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's absolutely hysterical. I mean, uh, so, I mean, big shout out to Peter Cook who's in it. I mean, Robin Wright, uh, Robin Wright Penn, uh, cause she married Sean Penn. Did she marry uh, Sean Penn? She did. Wow. After his Madonna marriage. I, I don't know whether they're still together or not, but, um, but she d absolutely did. She was Robin Wright Penn at one point so yeah um but and um and there's a whole lot of trivia around this movie um especially in uh fred savage's room there's there's a there's lot a of stuff. too much trivia I, you know again it, it's i like trivia as next to them as the as much as the next person yeah but like what specific video game he was playing. Oh yeah. What specific comic book was on his shelf. Like. Who oh yeah. Cares? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it is funny because there are certain things like one of the things that I remember, and I probably a lot of people don't necessarily remember him, but the Chicago bears team that was, went to the super bowl and, and forgive me for any bears fans, but I don't remember the year, but I do remember um, when that Super Bowl happened and the Bears were were uh, were up for the Super Bowl and um, and I still remember like uh, re the fridge <laughs> uh, what, what was his name William, William Perry? Perry yeah 
and his poster is on the wall behind Fred Savage. So, cause he, he, he was actually, he was a big boy and, um, and he, uh, he, he got a lot of notoriety around that time. And, but, um, but yeah, his posters on the, on the wall, um, Fred Savage is wearing a bears Jersey. Um, it's, there's, there's so many things around, you know, around the, the, the kid's room that that's why people probably remark on it. But, but yeah, uh, so, uh, when do you remember, when do you remember first seeing the movie? Like how old do you think you were? Oh, I, I, I do not remember. Like I must've been, you were young. I came out in 87. Um, so you know, I must've been at least 18. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I do remember you liking the movie a lot. I don't know what it was. I remember, like I said, I remember, um, I remember hearing you and your brother talking about the movie and both of you really liking the movie. <clears throat> I don't know what it was. It, it, at the time, it didn't strike me. Uh, you know, I was probably late twenties, I guess, uh, when, uh, when that came out, but, um, but I don't know. I, it, it just didn't resonate with me at the time. I found certain characters annoying and you know, uh, Wall Wallace Shawn, the uh, the one who kept saying, um, the one who kept saying, um, inconceivable, inconceivable. That annoyed me at the time, and I found it much more humorous and funny on my second viewing. But at the time, it was that that to me seemed like it, it's like, will you stop with the with the the darn inconceivable? It just. Like I said, it it bugged me, and um, I don't know what it was, but the movie didn't resonate. And now looking back at the movie, I do see it a, a lot more magic about the movie. There's the there's the book right there. Mm. But what, what amazed me is that this movie was able to seamlessly combine so many aspects. There is there's <laughs> surely action adventure. There's clearly romance. It's a hilarious movie. It's a comedy on, on one hand. Um, and then the whole thing with the grandfather and the, and the grandson, it's just a heartwarming family element. That, that, that yeah, that element I thought was, was, was really sweet. Um, the way they came together and they found uh, something, something, you know, that it really had in common. They, uh, he had it was obviously an old book that the grandfather loved and wanted to impart to his grandson and of course it's a hard sell because the kid's more of a modern kid who's wants to play video games does not want to uh does not want to have any part of this book whether he considers to be like oh it's a girl's book you know it's about romance and things like that and then uh, Peter Falk is trying to convince him. Well, it's got all kinds of stuff in it. It's got sword play and and uh, you know action and pirates and you know all kinds of elements <clears throat> that the kid, of course, is not appreciating. Um, now, talking about the cast again, Andre the Giant, man, he's in the movie. And uh, Andre can, the Giant, yeah, I mean, how can you not love Andre the Giant? You know, there's so much stuff around Andre that are funny and, and good things. He, he actually overcame a lot. Uh, I mean, he had that, he was actually, when you call him a giant in this, he actually was a giant. Yep. Uh, he had that giant, uh, gigantism. And, yes. Giant. And, and he, uh, uh, and now that's much more treatable, but, but, uh, back then that was like, you were fated to grow the way you were going to grow. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, he, he died at like 46, I think. Yeah. It was, too, was way too early. It was, I mean, some of it was his hard living because, uh, I mean, the man definitely was a man of big appetites. Um, everything about him was big. They say, and whether this is true or not, they say that you could fit a silver dollar. His fingers were so big inside the, his, his ring. On huh. his and that's uh that's pretty amazing if that's actually true that you could slide out silver dollars are big <laughs> you know a real silver dollar and uh, for a man's finger to be that huge i mean my god that's that's shockingly big 
but uh and you know the things he overcame like i said he he was not wealthy growing up he was kind of a misfit just this big dude but he told his family like i'm gonna be i'm gonna be rich and he did show up on the doorstep he, he went away showed up on the doorstep with a rolls royce and uh <laughs> he was he was uh actually wealthy they didn't even recognize him he'd been away so long but um but yeah there there's great stuff around him he's just funny including a, a really funny story that i heard i don't know if you've heard this one but uh, arnold schwarzenegger has told and you know not exactly a small man himself and um schwarzenegger went out to he 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 took schwarzenegger to a, probably a i don't know if it was wwf at the time but he took him to a wrestling match that he was in got, got, got him really good seats then took him out to dinner and they're out there drinking and and having a good time and when the time came time came to pay the bill schwarzenegger is like i'm gonna pay the bill you you treated me to this really great night it's a magical night for me and uh and and he's like no i pay i pay the bill and uh schwarzenegger's like no no i'm paying the bill and andre the giant grabbed schwarzenegger who at the time was a bodybuilder and a big strong guy picked him up and put him up on top of some like credenza or something that was in the place and went over paid the bill and came back and took him down again and Schwarzenegger said he picked him up like he was a doll. It was that, you know. I heard I heard the story a bit differently. Really? I heard that Schwarzenegger was with Andre the Giant and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar after filming scenes from Conan the Barbarian. That could be very true and, and he was in shape at the time, yeah. And they were and they were all eating out together. <laughs> yeah. And and Andre the Dr Giant had been notorious for pain for everything. Yeah. And so Schwarzenegger snuck away from the table and tried to pay without anyone else knowing. Right. And I wonder so if he's, that... up, yeah. he's up at the cashiers and all of a sudden he's picked up from behind <laughs> by both Kareem and Andre. Yeah. Well, I, I know they, I, I know there, uh, there was times where the two of them were playing jokes on him at, in, um, in uh conan but as far as that that the story that i heard i i it was a it was a schwarzenegger um interview when he told that story uh, i don't so i don't know whether there was more he, him and andre were actually friends and they did hang out so it is possible that there was more than one i don't know um those kind of things become legend over time anyway and people just kind of naturally you know, it's there were there were so many stories around Andre. People loved him, and um, I mean, he was this big, friendly giant that people. You know, it was a lot of fun for people to be around the guy. So um, I, I don't know. Like I said, who knows? All I can tell you is I enjoyed the story. <laughs> Schwarzenegger yeah. was actually considered for Andre's part in the Princess Bride. Really. It, really? it sounded like, and, and take everything I say yeah. about this movie with a grain of salt. And I'll tell you why later. Okay. But well, reading, yeah, I was going to say this movie has a lot of myth and hype and stuff around it anyway. And again, we always say too, we're, we're amateur film. We're just film lovers. We're not professional critics. We're not. There's nothing about what we do that's professional. We're just we're having nothing. fun with this, you know. It's we're, I mean, this is because we're we're movie lovers. That's the reason why we bring you know this to people. Um, besides the enjoyment that we get out of ourselves, you know. But but yeah. So um, so so yeah. anyway, yeah. Um, the the author, the author of the book, uh, William Goldman who is also the writer of the screenplay. He's the one that adapted his own book for this movie. He was saying he wrote that part for Andre the Giant. Wow, really? And, really? and he couldn't picture anyone else who, who could do it. He said, like, we look for him everywhere, but he was wrestling 330 days out of the year. 
Yeah, yeah. So he was constantly on the move. They could not get a hold of him. Yeah. And not knowing whether they could get him, they started looking around, considering other people. They even had one other guy to audition who had gigantism. He was an actual giant. Yeah. Too skinny. Wow. Yeah. And so they were so happy when they finally got Andre locked into the movie. Well, you know, the one one problem uh, with talking about this movie and Andre is there are so much uh, details around Andre that he it has to be talked about because, um, my God, like he was his health, you know, and he struggled with his health all his life because of the gigantism. And he uh, and his back was actually really bothering him during this movie. Um, and you know the guy was wrestling. He hurt. He, he hurt himself a number of times over his career, and and he he was struggling. When uh, Robin Wright, when she uh, Buttercup, when she uh, jumps out the window and and he catches her, they had to lower her on wires and make that look like she had jumped because his back would periodically bother him, and at, at that scene his back was hurting and, and and so they had to like quickly lower her on wires so mm -hmm. it looked like she had jumped but yeah there's there's a lot about his health at the at that time but um but yeah just a a, a cool formidable fun dude that uh i mean he was intimidating and it was almost sad that he was that intimidating because the guy was a man of big you know big joy and laughter and he just liked to enjoy life mm -hmm. but, yeah so what i said it's hard to figure out what actually the real story is when talking about the making of this movie yeah it's because the author is such a good storyteller yeah so so in the 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 title of the book the full title of the book is the princess bride S. Morgan Stern's classic tale of true love and high adventure, the good parts version. <laughs> really? And so when when you read the book, he starts out very autobiographical. He's talking about how, you know, he felt bad because he had a 10-year-old son and he was always away from home. And so, you know, he missed a lot of the, the kids growing up. And he was, you know, at, at the time he was... In California, his family was back in New York, and and he's dealing with the like. I think he was writing the screenplay for the Stepford Wives. Oh wow, yeah. And so uh, he he like he's like so I call my wife and I'm like, can you you know find this book? There, there's this book by Morgenstein that I love. My dad would read it to me when I was a kid, and I would love to get <laughs> it for our son. Yeah. And so the first part of the book is nothing fairy tale like. It's about him flirting with starlets in ca in Hollywood. Wow. On this search for this super rare book and finally giving it to his overweight son. Huh. At which point the the son like he gave it to the son and then like a week later asked his son about the book and the the kid was like oh, I was okay. And he's like, oh, you know, what was your favorite part? And and the kid is being intentionally vague. And and the guy's like, you didn't read it, did you? <laughs> wow, wow. And, and the son is like, well, I tried to, but I can't. It's like, it's really dense. And so the guy like picks it up and starts looking through it and realizes that what his father read to him was only part of the book. That oh, the wow. book had pages and pages of archaic history about the lands that the prince and buttercup were from. Huh. huh. And so that it was actually a historical document. Wow. Okay. After a while, you find out all <laughs> that is BS. It's all just a story. He never had a son. He's got two daughters. There is no Morgenstein. He wow. made up these lands. But every time he talks about this movie, he embellishes as if these were actual lamps, as if there were actually a Morgan story. Wow. Okay. And so I can read. I can remember I read an intro 
a 30 page intro to one of the editions of the princess bride and i was just totally sucked in with the author going on about visiting uh the museum of gilder and you know morgenstein reading over morgenstein's notes taking his son there and it was so well written i was entirely taken in i was completely disillusioned when i figured out that was all that was all story Wow. Wow. Okay. So I, I take it you're thoroughly enjoying the book. Oh, I am thoroughly enjoying the book. Oh. So that this, I'll this probably guy is have just to, an amazing writer. Yeah, I'll have to I'll probably have to check the book out now. Um, but yeah, um, like I said, I, I don't know I don't know why it didn't hit or resonate with me when I was younger. Um But I did, I, I have to say, you know, when you're talking about, we, we always say, uh, we, we give it the old uh, Ebert and Siskel thing of thumbs. And I, I will say, I definitely will go on record as saying. It's, Now you're pulling out the thumbs now, huh? Yeah, I, I know. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I really should, uh, I really should actually give it the full, the full thumbs up. by having i ha you know it's because yes it's it's well it's well worthy of of saying many thumbs up so that that should be our when we really both love the movie it should be many thumbs up <laughs> but uh, yeah it i like i said i i i give it it's just due this time and um there are some really funny scenes in it i i completely love how Um, the um, oh, uh, Humperdinck there, uh, who I for some reason I, I always boggle him his name I can never think of it or, but um, but Prince Humperdinck there, what an abject coward <laughs> the man is, um, because there's some really cool little side stories, and um, and early on you find out that um. that he has killed the father of the great swordsman there. Uh, and actually Is it Diego his name Montoya? is, yes, yes. And, and that's a great little side story. His whole life goal was to become a great swordsman just so he could fight and kill the man, the man who killed his father in a cowardly manner. And uh, that's what's so hysterical is, Prince Humperdinck is absolutely a coward, and when he does finally get confronted by uh, by, by Montoya, he's actually uh, Oh, he's he's not the one that kills the father. That was the six-fingered man. but he was the six-fingered man. Uh, I thought that was the count. I thought it was him, but but uh, because he because Because he, 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 Inigo Montoya eventually kills the count, and he does so by giving him the exact number and type of sword slashes. Right. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought I really thought the the scene where where he they they meet in the hall, he goes, I thought he actually said to him, I you know, like I've been looking for a six fingered man, and he stops and he just runs. <laughs> and and there's the whole chase scene through the through the um the castle. Oh, that's who you're thinking of. Yes. Yes. Um Yeah, absolutely. And, and So that's the count, okay. not the prince. Okay. I believe the prince just ran away. I only th I think he lived. Uh, yeah. Well, um, okay, that's right. That that's right. Because he was his he was his first um, bo bodyguard, protector, whatever. But Mm -hmm. supposedly, and and to have a coward as the uh, <laughs> as your as your bodyguard and protector. But yeah, um, so this was yeah this was the big, the big fight scene in the you know, in the wedding hall, but um, but yeah, it that in itself was hysterical to me, just how he he pauses, he looks, and then he just like turns in the other direction and runs, and it's it's like you coward, come back. <clears throat> Yeah, so so evidently, again, rumors, hearsay, I never know what's true about this movie. Yeah. But the guy that played Inigo Montoya, Mandy Patinkin, he is, he, it was said that he, he read the script 
and goes up to Rob Reiner and says, you know, I, I don't really have that many lines in here, but I say, I'm Inigo Montoya. You <laughs> killed my father, prepared to die. I say that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, and it that's... turns out it is one of the most memorable lines. Oh, absolutely. From the entire movie. And, and uh, Patinkin says he gets that quoted to him multiple times a day every day <laughs> oh it's probably it's probably tiresome at this point but at the he same says he loves it well you know what it, this movie this and you know this this is another scene behind me right now this is one of the scenes that i found hysterical because when um they actually pretty much bring carrie elways back from the dead um well he was mostly dead he wasn't most, completely dead most, yeah yeah it's it's like the line from the Wizard of Oz. He's he's really most sincerely dead, or she's really most sincerely dead. But um, but yeah, they are actually. Oh my God, those two, Billy Crystal and and Carol Carol Kane. Kane. Yeah, and, <clears throat> there is actually. She's quoted as saying, "This is a movie that should never be remade." Yes, and and, uh, and, and meaning that it was perfectly done. And that it should never be remade, and I th say that actually, there's a lot of movies Hollywood loves to remake a success story, and it's like you only want to do that because you have no original ideas. Make another legendary movie, D strive for that. Don't try, don't try to always try to remake something that actually is a perfect gem. So, and, so at, uh, at one point. There was actually a rumor that started going around Hollywood that a studio yeah. was putting together a remake of this. And the backlash was so severe, yeah. that idea just got buried. Well, it should be buried. And and believe me, there are movies that, uh, you know, don't remake them. They're, they're, too, they're too iconic. <clears throat> they're, I don't care whether it's something like It's a Wonderful Life or The Wizard of Oz um the princess bride there's certain ones that were done so perfectly with such a great cast yeah that, apocalypse now can you imagine someone trying to redo that uh, oh yeah 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 i mean you can't and if you do redo it all you're going to get is not only the comparisons to the original but the the actors if it's a great movie like this one was who's going to if you have cast anybody that you can think of that that could possibly fill Andre the Giant's shoes and forget it. No, I mean he was so well loved and such a great screen presence that you're not going to be able to do that. You know, I mean, uh, you know, find Billy Crystal and, and Carol Kane. I mean, <laughs> you know, no way. You you're just not going to uh, you're just not going to be able to redo this. It was yeah, perfect. The, the, these two behind me, Billy Crystal. Uh, um, and Carol Kane, they were on the screen for mere minutes. Yeah. And they're still one of the most memorable characters, or two of yeah. the most memorable characters in the entire film. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just like Wallace, um, what was his name? Wallace Shawn? Yeah. Yep. Just, just like Wallace Shawn, you know, did not dominate the movie by any means. But, you know, you want to talk about what people remember. Oh, that yeah. inconceivable. That's something they remember. Yeah, and, and again, I do find it funny that in my first viewing, I absolutely did not like him saying that line, and it was bothering me. It was like, shut up, stop saying inconceivable. And now, I, for whatever reason, my opinion has really changed because I, I now find that much more hilarious. <laughs> and... And also, I, I don't think it means what you think it means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God, the battle of wits too between the two of them. Um, th that was hysterical. I love how the and the whole thing with the poison and who was drinking. <laughs> and, you know, and when you she never get to a land war with Asia. Yeah. <laughs> but, but oh my God! Know, it's... Don't go up against a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many great lines around him. And even just the whole thing with uh, with um, Andre and and um, and the other dude there, I um, lost his name. Montoya. Uh, how they would, 
the, well, how, yes, how they would do the rhyming and annoy Wallace Shawn with it. <laughs> yes. That was really funny, too. I mean, there's, and those are, again, quotable lines that you have from this movie. People who actually are probably gave it its due more than I did when I, when, because it took a second viewing for me to fully appreciate it years later. Uh, to fully appreciate it but I think uh, for ones who fell in love with it at first viewing and just probably repeatedly watched it and I didn't I I, I, uh, I haven't seen this again since I just watched it again last week uh, for, for this talk here but um, as far as like my first viewing I was probably in my late 20s I looked at it and I was like yeah it's okay you know, I, I don't. I, I, didn't, I just didn't understand the hype around the movie, and I truly do now. And I, I actually have to say, um, I it was my error. You know, my 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 inability to really appreciate this movie. For anyone who has not seen the movie, and I don't think we've, I don't know that you. I don't know how you feel about this, but I don't think you could ruin this movie by no. talking about it. It's, no, th this movie stands up to repeated viewings. You, I mean, let's face it. It's a fairy tale. You yeah. know how it's going to end. You yeah. basically know what's going to happen. Um, it does not matter. It's it, it's the chemistry between everyone on screen. This yeah. entire cast is a, a thing of beauty to watch. Yeah, it's it, it's um, it's a movie that if you have, I'll tell you what. If you're a parent and you haven't seen this movie, or you have. And you got kids. Uh, give your kids the gift of showing them this movie, because I think it doesn't matter. I think this is a timeless movie. It's not a movie that um, it, it's aged very well. It's aged very well because it's a fairy tale, and um, and it's a beautiful fairy tale. It's a it's a love story, but it's so much more than that. It does for for whether whether it's a you're a kid that likes action adventure or whether you're a kid that loves a good love story or, or fairy tale love story whatever um the, if i have any criticism of uh some characters i would say that um that robin wright's character she she does strike me at least at first as being a little too wimpy she doesn't fight back as much as she's the she's more the epitome of uh, of, of the damsel in distress. Yes. However, that was something that was a common theme in older um, fairy tales, and so she's she's much more fitting of the of the classic fairy tale princess. So if there's you know if you're looking for like a super strong princess, you're not going to get it with this and i'd say that was probably if there's a criticism and again it's a classic fairy tale story so i think you need to just forgive that part but it's a beautiful story um it's a great love story for for um princess buttercup and and wesley they're um they overcome time and and she thinks he's dead i mean it's um they reunite it's a it's a great story you know it, it, it's just a, a darn good. I, I used to call this a perfect movie. And I yeah. realized that, you know, I don't judge a movie on all the things that other people judge movies on. Yeah. You know, the, the, the camera work can be less than perfect. And, yeah. uh, you know, the, the, the accents, um, some of the lighting, but it's the story that I always focus on. Yeah, and I consider this a perfect story. Yeah, I I agree, I agree. I think I think the story is, especially, and it's not just it's it's real easy to to say and think to yourself, well, it's a it's a great kid story or or whatever. But it's it's so much more than that. This will entertain. You know, back in the day, I think we've talked about this before, but. But back in the day when they made like the old Warner Brothers cartoons, the Bugs Bunny ones and stuff, um, they would show those at a midpoint uh, between 
between movies uh, when they were people were taking a break to go to the the snack bar or whatever they would insert a cartoon or or a short and uh, the cartoons because adults were sitting in the theater with their kids um, they wanted to have something that would still entertain adults and so a lot of the humor that's in those and the reason why those are so timeless they did stuff in those cartoons to make sure that adults were really entertained and it wasn't just some silly thing that would only entertain a kid and uh, they're witty and and the jokes stand up over time and that's something that they this movie is so much more than just a fairy tale it's it's a beautiful story it's got a lot of feel, good adults not not adults but i mean adult humor it's it's something that everyone's going to love of all ages. So if you're a parent and your kid has never seen this, give them the, the gift of seeing this because it's a fun movie. It's a movie that I think most kids will like. Um, it, it's I don't think it's overly long or it doesn't feel overly long. I don't know what the runtime is. What's that? 98 minute runtime. Yeah, which is perfect for a lot of people because I mean, a lot of people balk at, you know, watching movies that are that are you know they're i gotta admit when something starts approaching two hours uh, like i've had up to here with with the marvel and star wars movies that are topping two hours like i'm sorry yeah well it it, again i always say it depends on the movie a a three-hour great movie feels to me like a 90-minute movie it's almost too short a movie that uh, is only um, 90 minutes that's awful feels like it's a three hour movie mm-hmm. so once again I think it all depends on you know it all depends on the movie how great the movie is but this one to me uh, beautiful movie if you haven't seen it watch it we haven't ruined it with our you know the spoiler alert that we normally rip apart to shreds uh, 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 you know, telling every detail of a movie. I don't think we did it with this one. I think we, we, uh, th- this one, I don't think you can do that. I, I think, oh yeah, giant rats, even giant rats in this movie. Rodents so, of unusual size. Yes. Yeah. Did you th- know there were people in those? I'll, I'll bet because they were huge. They were absolutely. That was, that, that was um, smaller people in costumes. Wow. In, yeah. in fact, in fact, one scene started shooting late because yeah. the actor who was supposed to be in the suit didn't get to the set on time. And when they <laughs> went looking for him, it turned out he had been pulled over by a cop. Wow. And when the guy said, look, I'm an actor. You can't take me in. And he's like, well, what are you doing? I'm playing a giant rat. He <laughs> yeah. didn't believe it and hauled him off to jail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that actually probably would... Uh... <laughs> would not sell uh, most cops are going to think yeah you're you're really? a, a giant it. rat yeah yeah of all of all things to actually say that you were that you were doing in the movie but um no oh, I, like i said what's that here's some random trivia sure do you know who did the soundtrack to this movie yes i a- actually do because it was something I, I did look it up uh yeah, Mark Knopfler from Mark from Dire, Knopfler, Straits. Dire Straits. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a cool thing right there. So, mm-hmm. And yeah, and a great piece of trivia. But yeah, I I actually did notice uh, that, and I I was actually blown away by the fact. Yeah, it was it was Mark Knopfler. So mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. great piece of trivia there. Okay, so, let me see if I, I I've got another piece of trivia for you. Sure. The the castle where the final battles were yeah that was an actual place okay. that wasn't set really that was haddon hall in england oh, yeah. and yeah. it was built in 1087 wow really yeah well that's an early um that's an early castle i can't believe they let a film crew in there <laughs> yeah yeah really really yeah because a film crew can be pretty destructive and a mm-hmm. But yeah, that, no, that's that's a great piece of trivia right there. Uh, no, Dom, I think you picked a winner on this one. I, I really do. It, it, like I said, it, it's one of those movies where I'm like, it, I have to talk about this movie. 
this is it's not just me this movie shows up on a ton of top 100 lists yeah yeah from around the world well and rightly so like i said it's just it's a movie that makes you feel good it's a it's a movie that i would be happy to show anyone from almost yeah. any walk of life yeah yeah and and once again i i i do say if you if you haven't seen it uh you you need to uh if you've got kids that have never seen it make sure that they see it it's a it, it's a magical movie and for mm -hmm. kids they're going to remember the movie it's probably going to become a, a well-loved movie as they grow up so give them that yeah, gift I, of seeing it i i love this movie enough that believe me i could talk for hours on this yeah. but i will pull out the thumbs yeah yeah i i, I think we've probably wrapped it up enough that we've We've imparted our, uh, our great love for the for this movie. Uh, so well, I think so I don't see how you love movies enough to watch us and <laughs> have not seen the princess. That seems impossible yeah. to me. Well, yeah. So uh, go out there and see the Princess Bride. See it and, again, <laughs> uh, and don't forget leave that like and subscribe for us too. Um, and Dom, I will um, I will actually announce my pick for next. Oh, week. okay. What's next? Uh, I actually I actually have it and it's um this one is actually a, a movie that a friend of mine Randy Davis I'm going to say his name but, um but he uh, he actually asked me if we would do this I have not seen this movie yet although I do own it but I have not seen it it's Sasquatch Sunset Huh have you seen it I've heard of it Yeah it's um huh. It, I think it's probably uh, going to be a little bit of an unusual movie. This is uh, one with no dialogue. If What's I'm, that? If I'm remembering this right, this is a movie with absolutely no dialogue. I don't, uh, you know, I know very little about it. It's I'm going on the idea that this was a recommendation. So um, I've actually I, uh, been curious to see this. Yes. So so that's the um, that's the one for next week, and uh, we're coming up on. We're coming up on Thanksgiving, and I will pull up a. I do have a Thanksgiving one, which probably some people will probably go, "Oh my God!" But uh, but I, I, I'm going to have to bear the brunt of the heartwarming films for this. Yeah, whole you will. Movie. You will because my my uh, Thanksgiving movie is not. I, I guess some <laughs> some people might consider it to be heartwarming, but uh, but anyway, shout out to Randy Davis, good friend of mine. Um, that um, I used to work with. He's retired now, but he recommended Sasquatch Sunset. Uh, so um, Sa Sasquatch Sunset. So mm -hmm. at any rate, like I said, we'll we'll pull that one up for next week. And with that, I Dom, I think we can call it a we yep. can call it a day. And um, great talking with you. Uh, good movie pick. Always good. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's wrap this one up. But uh, Dom. Um, that you picked a good one. Uh, and we'll see Sasquatch next week. <laughs> All right. Take take care and uh see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.